Hey, this is Dennis, and welcome to another episode of the Grounded Reason Podcast, where tech and policy collide. You guys couldn't see it, but I was mocking Dennis's radio He's voice. always mocking me. That's why I give him crap at the end. Of the yeah, show. Well, I probably deserve it. No. <laughs> so, today we're going to be covering a lot of news that's happened uh, when it comes to uh, the networks and how all of a sudden they seem to be adopting a streaming friendly policy yeah. and why that might be. Um, so to start off, we're going to be talking about, I mean, a couple of weeks back, we talked about, uh, you know, the Nielsen rankings yeah. and um, all of the... The Nielsen numbers are here. The <laughs> Nielsen numbers are here. But we talked about all the uh, subscriber losses, like, and that's survey data. Like they call people like you and me and they ask them... How do they watch television? So it's survey based. So it's not yeah. hard numbers. No, but it's but a sample. The way I look at it is the numbers are probably flawed, right? Like because it's statistically right, but based on the edges. Sample. It's close. Well, but yeah. here's the thing: is that the methodology is consistent. Correct. So if they're flawed, they're flawed from quarter to quarter, and right? It normalizes. You can right? definitely see a trend you from from trend. the data, and that's what you really should be looking at, right. at least. But. The actual the numbers that just came in, um, because uh, past couple of weeks, um, the cable companies and telecom and satellite companies have been reporting their earnings. Yeah, um, it, they've reported a million losses. Wow, this quarter. Well, that's quarter two. Pretty consistent with the numbers that Nielsen. Reported. Yeah, it was close, and that's up. Like it's like near it's like a nine forty ish so like close yeah. to a million losses and in quarter one they lost seven hundred and sixty some odd video subscribers mm. so it's it's getting pretty bad yeah and those are households again that's not individuals those are right households. yeah subs- yeah because typically you know yeah, you, I mean a subscribers a, a household so right so um I mean the big loser um was um what. AT and T, but then again, a lot of that's offset because they're shifting to Directv now. Yeah, so they're saying a lot of those went over to a Their streaming other service because right. the other big loser was Dish Network, which has Sling. Right. So there's a lot of shift there. Um, Directv also because they they kind of that separate. Yeah. Also lost a lot between Directv and AT and T. They lost almost. Yeah. Uh, you know, they lost about three hundred and fifty thousand households. Wow! Right. Um. Even and okay. Here's the big news is like all the major comp like all the because usually there is some you know cannibalism between yeah. the group. Like one and, loses, the other one wins. It's, and it's been Comcast who's been kind of like taking you know up the slack because they've had slight gains right. when everyone else is losing. But even Comcast lost uh almost forty k this time around. And that's actually a. a really telling thing right like because typically like you're saying it's it's zero sum right like everyone is flowing within this market right, right? like so a user or user geez showing my it <laughs> um a a person or household leaves uh you know one of the uh isps they go to another right for right. their content um, yeah, because their 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 contract is up, and then they yeah, see a better and they deal. shop around, and they if they have choice, wherever, right? You know. Yeah, assuming they have choice. But this basically means that something, some service outside of those that are reflected in the traditional ISP markets are drawing customers in, right? Yeah, and that's that's big big news. Yeah, so what really kind of like struck me is you get this news and then do you remember a couple of years back, like ESPN was like, well, we're never going to go to streaming. Yeah. Like, and well, they made a big deal of it about two years ago. They did. Um, well, first Disney owns ESPN, right? Disney makes the announcement that they are pulling all of their Netflix content. Yeah, I saw that. That's huge. Yeah, but the, the Marvel stuff is still safe for now because they have uh, 
I'm pretty sure they have a contract, but yeah. they're going to be keeping. They're going to be keep like your Jessica Jones and like I think they're doing the Defenders. Yeah, uh, Iron Fist. I'd be Daredevil. really upset if all of a sudden the Defenders was moving off of Netflix. Right. Well, so so all the. So all the Marvel, I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, all the Marvel stuff is going to is going to stay, but they're intending on um pulling all of their like Disney shows and movies yeah. off of Netflix to launch their own streaming service. Yeah, right. well actually they're going to be launching a couple streaming services. Really? Well, the first one is they're going to be doing um a full-on ESPN like streaming service but it's not going to be exactly the same as like the espn on cable tv okay they're planning on making it more uh like millennialish. okay <laughs> whatever uh, that explain. means explain yeah well what I, is that's that what mean? they want to make it they say uh, they, they kind of want to like target it to more um, live sports. They're going to definitely have more okay. live sports. And to do this, Disney, uh, they put like $1.58 billion uh, into, to buy shares of BamTech, um, which is a, uh, basically it's a streaming platform. And they do like MLB, um, They I think they do NHL. They're, it's like a streaming service. So they purchased, like they have an ownership share of that now. Okay. Um, so that's going to give them a lot of ability to do like live streaming. Um, and when it comes to sports, you need to have like, you have to have pretty solid streaming technology because it's, it's different than if you're watching a show or TV, because it's a lot of movement and a lot of yeah. motion and you want to make sure that it's rendering and properly. People do not dig hiccups. No, not when they're sports. watching their sports. Right. That's like a yeah. big deal. Well, do you remember like, Gosh, this is this is notorious. This was like mid '80s, I think. There was like a a Raiders game, I think it was, that was running like really late, and they cut over to like maybe it was like early '80s. They cut over to Heidi, that show Heidi, <laughs> and like the movie, you know, or was it a show? I think it was a show. Okay, okay. and like, uh, and like, I think it was the Raiders like came back to win, and it became like. The reason you never cut over. Never cut away from the game. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> never cut over. So, um, but but they're going to have, what they said is they're, the ESPN branded multi-sports service will offer a robust array, and I'm quoting here from their press release, a robust array of sports programming featuring approximately 10,000 live regional, national, international games and events a year, including MLB, Major League Baseball, National Hockey League, Major League Soccer, Grand Slam Tennis, and college sports. Um, they're going to have individual sports packages also available through the service, including MLB TV, NHL TV, and uh, M- MLS Live, like Major League Soccer Live. So that'll all – they're planning on having all that available through an ESPN-branded streaming service uh, due out, I think, in 2018. Okay. I just want to correct myself. It is the thing I was talking about is actually known as the Heidi Bowl. <laughs> I'm not I'm not kidding. In 1968, it says on November 17th, 1968, the Oakland Raiders scored two touchdowns in nine seconds to beat the New York Jets, and no one sees it because they were watching the movie Heidi instead. With just 65 seconds left to play, NBC switched off the game in favor of its previously scheduled program and uh, made-for-TV version of the children's story about a young girl and her grandfather in the Alps. Which, you know, when I think of your quintessential football fan, I think of Heidi. I mean, honestly, <laughs> knowing what I know about Raiders fans, I'm sure they appreciated a movie about a young girl and her grandfather. Okay, in now the I'm house. just picturing like two guys with, <laughs> with white, white yeah, with spiky helmets and like <laughs> looking like the losing their minds, looking like the Road Warriors from like yeah. wrestling, losing, <laughs> losing their, their minds. minds. <laughs> now this is 1968, so maybe they were a little more subdued. <laughs> maybe this is what caused all the Road Warrior stuff. I don't know. That wouldn't be surprising. 
So I digress, but <laughs> this is really going back to people don't like their sports being messed with. So <laughs> streaming services better be pretty solid. Yeah. Oh, um, one thing, though, that they won't have and um, is the NFL. It won't include NFL or uh, the NBA stuff. And I think it's the a big re- gap, but still it is. It, it, the reason is, is like, I, so you won't see your Monday night football probably no. on this. And the reason is because that's like such a big cash cow for yeah. the cable yeah, networks yeah, yeah. Uh, that I'm pretty sure they don't want to do this. But eventually, no, oh, it's more TV moves the door, over. The door is open now. Right. Right. Like it, it, that's the thing is once once a company does something like we will never do this. And then they start doing it a little. Well, well a, they're eventually going to do but, it. And that's the thing is like ESPN, was like, we will not do this. It was like it's two. It was like two years ago. It yeah. wasn't long ago. Yeah, and, no. And the writing, I think they're they're seeing the writing on the wall with all of. First off, ESPN has been like an anchor around the the neck of the Walt Disney Company for for about the last year. Right, because every time somebody drops cable TV, they're losing nine bucks. Yeah. And, you know, you talk about, you know, a million people in a quarter. Yeah. It's $9 million. That starts to really hurt. <laughs> I mean, at least in the Reeves household, $9 million is a lot of money. In a quarter, because of one thing that Yeah, happened. in a quarter. I'm sorry. Right. Not a dad <laughs> A quarter. Right. Good Lord. Right. So uh. you figure, you know, Walt Disney is probably, you know, because they've got. You know, Star Wars movies coming out making, yeah. you know, a billion dollars. Yeah. Every time a comic book character, you know, touches celluloid, they're at least making like half, half 500, half a billion. Well, I mean, now don't forget, it does cost like 200 million to right. make those movies. Right. But they are making like the revenue side, they're generating half a billion dollars. Right. So they're making a couple hundred million dollars right. often. Right. So, so you would think right now that like Disney's like gangbusters singing in the rain, but right? no, like yeah. this ESPN has been like, and the, the whole the TV side of the business. I mean, the whole because ad, not only are they losing subscribers, but it's causing a whole like feedback loop because ad revenue is down over TV. Sure, it's just it's just a mess over there. So they're kind of you know hedging their bets here by trying to kind of focus. I've never understood. God, this is a terrible sentence. I've never understood not doing that, right? Like, right. let me double and negative. They, as it. soon as I saw it, but, I mean, it didn't. It doesn't take a genius to kind of see. Okay, no, if you've already got the content. Why not put it out yeah. in two different venues? Not only that, but if you're if you're looking, ha, look at any kid under the age of ten. Right. How are they consuming it? How are they watching media? Yeah, they got a device in their hand. That was actually one of the things when you were first talking about like the. Uh, cable numbers i was wondering i just didn't get into it um like how many of those people are going with just straight cellular plans i mean it's not the majority but there's a chunk it's probably it depends i mean it is it is possible to do it with a 4g plan if you get lucky because the problem in the fine print it says once you get over to a certain number on those unlimited plans they can throttle you but they don't really say what those thresholds are. Yeah, but when we were going over the Nielsen stuff in the, I don't know, an episode or two ago, I remember the study that I, that I was citing about, like, you know, uh, recent demographic breakdown of, like, how people were leaving the market and so on. It was something like 14% were, you know, going straight, just cellular. And and that seems yeah. reasonable to me, right? Like it's nowhere near a majority, but fourteen percent's noticeable, right? Like yeah. that is a noteworthy amount. Yeah, definitely. So so that's so so now you have, you know, you're gonna have ESPN over streaming. Uh Straight up, without having to go through an intermediate, like what do they call what they're calling skinny bundles like like slang or direct TV now. They're also going to be branding and this is the year after this is they're looking at like a uh 2019 slate for this which is gonna have like all of their you know pixar and disney animation studios stuff coming over yeah. uh streaming service 
So they're looking at, like, for instance, they're looking at Toy Story 4. Uh, they're going to look at a sequel, Frozen, uh, Lion King, Disney live action, along with a bunch of other highly anticipated movies are coming out. So they're looking at seeing that as kind of like the catalyst to come out with their own streaming service. Yeah, I got to see what this settles out because I'm getting ready to have another kid. I've got a lot. Uh, of yeah, Disney you need to know where I the Disney's watch. happening. And then there, you look at like they're gonna have all these Pixar movies hitting um, that year. They're also gonna have they got all their Disney Junior content and all their Disney XD content. Um, is so so they there's like they're looking at that as you know there's enough there to kind of fuel their own uh, streaming service. And when you think about it, when it comes to kids, yeah, because what parent you know it's like if depending on the price. If you if your kid's under Disney, All right, you're willing to probably throw out an extra seven, eight bucks, nine bucks a month, probably well, it, to get all the Disney content onto a streaming service. I mean, honestly, when I think about it, like if there's any company outside of the you know major traditional cable providers, so the HBO's, Showtime's, et cetera, that could really spin off its own thing, I mean, Disney's definitely one of them, right? Like. Disney has Marvel, Lucas, right? All of its original content. Well, there's a lot of speculation around all that the too. legacy content because there's no reason why, like, if this works out, that they couldn't down the road come out. Because look, they're building a Star Wars universe, yeah, just like they're building like their Marvel universe. Yeah. It won't be, you know. It, it, there were a lot of naysayers about them being able to do that with Marvel. When Iron Man came out. Right. And, you know, we're what, prob- I'm guessing I'd have to go look at IMDb, but 10 years on from that. I think it's, and, yeah, 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 eight yeah it's or about n- that. Eight, nine, ten, something like that. And, you know, from Iron Man 1, and, and now we're legitimately there, right? And like, they haven't There's had a, a full-on Marvel universe of movies and There hasn't TV been shows. one bust. I can't think of one bust right. that they put out. There's been one, that they've been one or two that's made less money than, you know, they... No, I don't even know if they've had like no. I don't I think they haven't always, had a loser. They haven't had a loser. No. no. I even mean, I, I think one of the lower producers was like the first Thor. It didn't do particularly well, but it still made money. Yeah, it still made money. And, and it was and, good. Yeah, it was it was okay. I mean, like I like the second Thor, but I uh, haven't yeah, seen that's, Ragnarok yet. I that's not, that's it. It comes out yeah, it's not out, right? Right, right. Okay, all right. Well, I'm excited to see that one. That looks like um, I also want to see Black Panther. I think that's going to be oh, that's going to be solid. Ass. Well, yeah, like um, their uh, Ragnarok. I I don't know. Have you seen the pre the trailer oh, yeah. for it? Oh, I've it, seen both. Yeah, it looks amazing. Um, it, it it has a Guardians of the Galaxy feel to it. Yeah, if you ask me, and I love yeah, it's a it's a little more tongue in cheek, and yeah. I think that's actually a really good way to do it. Right. I still haven't seen Homecoming yet. Like oh, the it's great. Spider Man. I've heard it's really really good, and I've heard that from like. Well, the We Hate Movie guys, which they're pretty critical of stuff, right? Yeah, they have like, a podcast. They're, they're actual critics, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> they're, they're just another podcast. Yeah, yeah they're, they're great. If you don't listen to them, they're a really, really good podcast. And basically their premise is they take movies that are kind of like uh, goofy or bad, and they make fun of them. And occasionally right. what they will do is they will review a fan favorite that they want to go see. And they went or and something saw, that's out right now. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And they went and saw Homecoming, uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, and they all liked it. I mean, they had stuff to say about it that was kind of funny and, you know, silly observations and whatever. And it was it was an amusing episode, and I, I liked it. But, like, uh, but it was generally, like, they all were thumbs up, you know? And I will say that this is easily, easily the best Spider-Man that's out the only debate i heard from them and i could see this because i really like this spider-man movie is spider-man 2 with toby mcguire and dr Octopus. that's just a good movie that's really good it's a really good movie and i and i think the because and that but that's all story driven i'll say that like toby mcguire was a terrible spider-man 
Yeah, I buy that. I mean, I think he's a really good actor. I just, I, I, he just was never quite Peter Parker. Right. He was fine as Spider Man. Like, he was right? kind of like I don't know. He was always he had a kind of like the he was like golly G about everything. Yeah, you know, and kinda, that was and that's not that's not Spider Man. No, and the other guy, uh, Andrew Garfield, who's also good. Too smooth though. He's like too, too smooth. Too way too, hip. too cool. Like. <laughs> <laughs> and and I like him. I think he's a fine actor. And I th- I actually, unlike a lot of people, liked the first Amazing Spider-Man. No, the one with the lizard. It's okay. I thought it was pretty good. It's okay. Um, I've never seen the second one with Electro. That's got like, awful. I've heard that's terrible. It's 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 a complete dumpster fire. And so of a movie. we've gotten very off topic, but the well, point no, I was still, making was we're like, still on Disney here. Yeah, ish. <laughs> and and the point I was making was that like. I don't know how does um how does their TV show on Fox do uh what's that agent agents uh, of shield yeah well that's the talk here is that they have so much Marvel TV content is once it comes once it comes off Netflix they could just put that all together because they also have an uh, what's it they have a Inhuman show that's coming out coming out I but think I heard, on it's gotten Fox re- or is that on ABC I can't remember it's, I'm pretty sure it's ABC because it's um it's only mutants. The way the contract, I don't know why I know this, but the way the contracts work out is uh, so irritating. But yes, Fox has mutants, right? Inhumans, though, are not mutants. They are not. No, they're technically non-human, so they can't be mutant right. humans. So the that's right. I just said that sentence out loud. <laughs> so the so, so the uh, so, so the. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the fact that a bunch of people in suit dies and sit around and debate definitions. Well, yeah, because of Marvel, uh, you know, like uh, genus and phylum and species. Well, that's like they actually the best is I wanted to be there, like when they did, because because Quicksilver is both a mutant and, and an, an Avenger. Avenger. Oh, wait, oh, hold up. You've just blown my mind. So, right, well, yeah. he's in both. He's, yeah, no, there he is, is a Quicksilver in the Fox ver- world, and there's a Quicksilver in the Avengers world. Oh, that's absolutely right. So, so, so there's a there's, although he died in the Avengers, right? World. He's still alive and well over in the Fox world. Um, I actually prefer him in the Fox world, which is probably the only scenario I prefer things in the Fox world. They did a good job with. Um, and I'm, uh, you'll have to excuse us because I'm we're both comic nerds, so we're getting really dorky. But basically, we're book. saying Fox owns X Men and all things related, which is right. what Dennis, yeah, in layman terms, what Dennis means by mutants, right? Like, yes, I, I didn't even mention that. Wow, that's yeah. really bad. I just assumed everyone out Everyone's there knew. Everyone's following. Uh, everyone this, right? knows that all X Men, right? Yeah. So, so like in the Quicksilver, or I'm sorry. In the X Men movies, there's a character Quicksilver, who also makes a, an appearance in the big old Avenger movies. In the uh, second Avenger movie, he dies, but he's still alive in the X Men movies, uh, primarily because the rights to those characters are owned by two totally separate companies. Right, right, right. So, so then you have, you know. <laughs> So then, like, Marvel's got your Avengers and, like, you know, it. they have a decent stable. They, I think Marvel has everything else. Well, no, because Sony still has Fantastic Four, Silver Surfer, Galactus. Oh, and Spider-Man. And they share Spider-Man with, with, with Marvel. Which, that's the weirdest arrangement Well, because, like, all. Sony couldn't, Sony couldn't get Spider-Man. Basically, the, it's really weird. Sony owns all of the Spider-Man and Spider-Man villains. When I say owns, they have the rights to yeah, make they those own movies. The copyright, uh, for, copyright, for movies, right. Yeah. So um, uh, they struck a deal because they weren't really doing well uh, with Spider-Man, which is crazy considering that he's, he's like the quintessential the most Marvel character. popular <laughs> Marvel character ever. Right. He's literally in 1968. That Three. year keeps coming up. Wait. Um, in 1968 was the debut of Spider Man, no, wasn't it? No. What year? 62 or 3. Are you sure? Amazing Fantasy 15. Oh, you're bugging me now. No <laughs> pun intended. I'm going to look. But the, the point being, that is uh, when like Marvel really took off. They did have, prior to that, like Captain America, but they were kind of like. 
pretty iffy. Well, well, Captain America has been around uh, this. Oh, we're Since really back the tangent. 40s. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I mean, they were timely comics. Marvel yeah. was timely comics. Yeah, I know. Yeah, There's right. like it's like the begats in the Bible. But yes. my point is not to take these poor people through the Marvel. Like, <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, what you did, that, 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 what's, what's important though is um, basically. I'm checking your date. Uh, you should. Disney has so much. If this works out for them, they have so much opportunity to have like these really do. branded streaming services. I think it would actually. Pre- to where they could cool, just have a standalone yeah. universe that I'm sure, like, because that's the thing is you have a, like, look at us talking right now. There are millions of us out there that would gladly hand There's over. There's so many dorks. They're ten the bucks a month to watch, especially if they Marvel do something. Heroes on a screaming as service. As soon as they do something like pull my Daredevil right. and my Jessica Jones yeah. and my Luke Cage and Iron uh, Fist from. Uh, from Netflix, yeah. Netflix. I'm hopping. I'm jumping in shark. I'm yeah. jumping the shark. Train. Ship. Ship, yeah. Something. Man, we mix some metaphors right there. Um. So, do you have a verdict yet? You son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, 62. Amazing Fantasy, number 15, <laughs> August 1962. I'm really... 62, that's what I said. I'm yeah, really pretty pissed <laughs> off. I was totally convinced it was 1968. No. Yeah, well, no, I 68, know. 68 was the, I think that's when the Avengers, actually Avengers, wait, no, no, that's when the Iron Man comic came out, the solo Iron Man comic. was. God, I want to throw my phone at you. <laughs> if I didn't like this phone. I think that's right. I think that's right. I would totally. Because Avengers it. was 63. Well, the point still remains this, that Spider-Man was the thing that put Marvel on the map. Yes, and Dennis knows comic books better than I do. I'm a, I'm was reading them when I was You've got a problem. Forever. I do. I do I have a big problem. Um okay, so if anyone's still listening who, you know, isn't a Marvel Comics fan. There's no way anyone's still listening. Um that that was all, actually they announced and the, the big thing is is a Disney announced all that on their earnings call after the and they put out a press release. Yeah. So it's serious business if companies talking about it on there. They're very excited about this. Yeah, that means, honestly, it's one of their key initiatives. Right. Um, and also, speaking of earnings calls, CBS had theirs as well. And CBS, okay, they have CBS All Access. And soon, I mean, very soon, Star Trek Discovery, Star Trek Discovery is coming coming out on that so the and it's exclusive to cbs all access like i think they're going to show the first episode of the new show the new star trek show on cbs but then it's going to be exclusive to cbs all access their streaming service that's going to be interesting yeah and then there's a lot of trekkies out there yeah well and they're coming out with a couple more um like exclusive shows because they have um they have star trek and then they did the um spinoff to the good wife um, was on, only on CBS All Anne Access. And watches that show. Yeah, on CBS All Access? Uh, oh, The Good Wife. She, she watches, watches the, the Good Wife. Not the spinoff? Not the spinoff. Okay. So since they had CBS All Access, they were kind of stingy with, right. you know, handing over CBS content to your other streaming services. Until lately. Like it was just an interesting like reversal of course. Well, they 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 just recently struck a deal with Hulu, um, YouTube TV, DirecTV Now, and uh, Fubo TV to let a lot of those local affiliates like start running the show. on their service. So like they if you have one of those live streaming services. So depending on and it's not just the, your major new york yeah philadelphia it's some like smaller markets too um they're letting those people get like their local cbs affiliate through That's that cool. streaming service yeah and it's, so good i was just gonna say that almost seems like the opposite play as what disney's doing so like in fact it is right like disney has very recognizable like titles Right. And right. those titles are so big, they draw a cross market. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, so it makes sense for them to like set up their own thing and keep that close to vest. But something like what you're talking about, where it's very localized and really you just want to get a cut out of every local eye that looks at that. Right. You don't want that going to antenna. 
is really what it comes down to, right? Yeah, like, they want to catch they want to catch a little bit of revenue off of you wanna, it. You know, even if it's a nickel on the dollar, it's a nickel in your pocket, right? right. Like so, that's a pretty smart play on CBS's. Uh, you know, from CBS's perspective, I think. No, oh, definitely. Um, and what's cool is like ABC, NBC, the bro- the broadcast networks are kind of doing this where they're like negotiating more deals yeah. um, with some of these over the top streaming services. And I think it's because like, I mean, how many times do you, have you heard about you know Directv or Dish or whoever having some type of negotiation issue yeah. with one of these like with the broadcast fees or yeah. like this or that? And I think it's just to the point where the networks are just like fine, you know. We'll just go elsewhere, and we'll just yeah. offer it. And maybe Hulu they, gives really favorable terms, right? And if you look, I was looking at Hulu's live TV, and there are number there are a number of states now where you can get ABC or cities, excuse me, where you can get ABC, NBC, Fox, and CBS. Like wow, yeah, like over streaming on Hulu TV. Does that include sports? It, yeah. Yeah, it includes. It's like having like if it's for, the regular channel. It's the regular channel. Wow, commercials and all. I mean, right, but, but still, still, um, like Chicago, like Hulu TV. If you live in Chicago, you can watch all three, all the major networks, um, L A, all the majors like L A, New York, Philadelphia, San Francisco. Um, you can. You, yep, you have. All of them. And then there's a couple where, like, Dallas has, I think they have everything but ABC. So, they're, I mean, they're filling them in. And yeah. it's coming slowly. And, I mean, DirecTV now is like that, too, where there's, like, the major networks have right. most of them locked down now. Because CBS just jumped on board. They were the holdout, I think, for them. Um, so, like, mm-hmm. those major big cities. So, as – and furthermore, like, those local affiliates – have been signing deals with the parent company to say, you know, those big markets. Typically, the parent company owns the big markets, your New Yorks, your LAs. Of course. So those smaller cities like Milwaukee, like affiliate, is signing over saying, whatever you negotiate with the services, we'll tag on and and we'll, we'll honor it as well. So as that starts to happen... It'll cascade. Yeah, and we might get to a point where... You can just stream your local affiliates across sure. the board. CBS has been like through CBS All Access, they have like ninety percent coverage of the country right now through CBS wow. All Access. So I remember a year ago, because it's a little over a year now. It's like probably thirteen months since we started the podcast, right? Yeah, about that. Yeah, we started. Actually, we just passed our anniversary. Uh, August third, I think, was the. Oh, was it? So it's not quite been thirteen months. Right, it's a year. Yeah. Um, so we uh, it seemed like like when you were reading the news about this type of thing and the local affiliates ever getting online, it seemed like there was no hope. And I remember us talking about like I don't know if we actually did it in an episode if we were just kind of chatting. It's just a matter of the lawyers haggling it out, right? Yeah. Like it'll happen. It, it you know it's just it makes too much sense. Yeah. And you also got to remember starting to get there. these are also and it's like cause we, companies these days are pretty you know they move quick. Yeah, but these old like these are all like your old yeah, they've been Hollywood New York time. companies. They've just you know the wheels move slow. They, <laughs> you still have to wear suits to work here. I mean. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's it's very like a lot of these people that are the heads of these companies came up during the Madman era, right? Like right. they're like, and I don't mean when that show was on the air. I mean <laughs> when right. when people were smoking in the office and drinking bourbon, right? Right? Like, so yeah, so is there, mean, yeah, they're still angry they can't smoke and drink in the office. Yeah. So things take a little while. I'm a little angry I can't smoke and drink in the office, but <laughs> whatever, I get it. Um. So there's that. Also, CBS. Okay, do you know about the the Mayweather McGregor? Yeah, yeah, that's big news. Like, okay, (laughs) that's okay. For those that you don't know, McGregor is like a UFC fighter. Yeah, and and a like 
The best, one of the best. Be, yeah, he's a, the legitimately best. a very, very good UFC. I don't want to fighter. say he's the best because then like eighteen like UFC fighters will come in here and kick our ass, kick the shit out of us. But no, he's like, but one he's of a the very best, good along with his other eighteen. Mi- yeah, um, a, a very good mixed martial artist, right? And well, and of course, you know, Floyd Mayweather is probably pound for pound the best boxer of this era. Yeah, I, he's undefeated, right? Yeah, I think he's undefeated. Yeah. Um. He's retired. Part, well, part of that is he was selective with his fighting, but he also beat the shit out of a whole <laughs> lot of people. He, he did. Right? Like, so he is probably, like, I, I'll say it again, so I don't want to take anything away from probably pound for pound the best, you know, boxer of the era. Right. So This fight's interesting. Yeah, because... Um, I have opinions. Well, right? like, okay, first off, they're boxing. Yeah, they're not fighting. Right, like that would be one thing. Okay, right? like because even though Mayweather is a lot older than McGregor, yeah, that's totally true. I anyone who okay, boxing is a technical sport. It's a sport, yeah, and it's technical. It's not like you. Can, no, no one can just you can be you could punch like the hardest punch and a, ever, and a legitimate boxer will take you apart. Yes, because it's not just getting in there and throwing a punch. It's yeah. a Especially these days. So, so my my buddy uh, who boxes, uh, he, I mean, like you know, just amateur, like going to the gym or whatever. But he's he's gotten to where he knows what he's doing. Um, and I were kind of talking about this, and it's like it's one of those things where it it reminds me of like let's say a you know world class pool player, right? Mm-hmm. Like. Just, just supremely good pool player, then going to challenge like I don't know, uh, what's Andrew Federer? Like what? What's the the tennis player's name? Like one of the Federer? best. What's his name? Federer. Yeah. Yeah. Like in tennis, right? Like just because you're a really really good pool player doesn't mean you can switch over and play tennis. Or like I think a, a you're. You're close with the analogy, right? But right. I would go with like Federer and like the best ping pong player, sure, ever. Because then it's like close. It's similar, right? Because like, that's like you know they're fighting and both fight. They're both fights, right? Like right. a boxer will beat the shit out of me, right? And in right? ping, <laughs> ping <laughs> pong, so minute, ping pong yeah. has a net and yeah. tennis has a net. <laughs> yeah, and and to a lay person, right? Like so, if I came up. <laughs> And, like, you know, got into a fight with a boxer or an M&M, uh, MMA guy, right, mixed martial artist, a lay person would be able to tell no difference from the result because either one would knock me unconscious <laughs> almost immediately. Yes, yeah. Right? Like, yeah. But, but, like, when you get at the... You would get the very, bronze. Very, yeah, you would get the bronze medal in, yeah, in, right? in that fight. Very, very the high level. <laughs> That's my point. At the very, very high level, there's a very distinct difference in those specialities. Yes. Right? Like, so anyways, you were talking about the fight from right. a content provider. Yes, because, and, and this is important because people have been asking me on the, on the blog, uh, Showtime yeah. is going to allow you to stream it. If you pay, like, they're essentially going to That's have, new. The, yeah, they're going to, but it's going to be through the web at www.showtimeppv.com. Because so. I've been watching Showtime After Dark boxing for, I don't know, ever. Yeah, well, it's not on the Showtime. You can't. No, get it that's what sh- I'm saying. Yeah. Like back in the day, I used to watch that all the time. I don't anymore because I'm in bed because I got lots yeah, of but, kids. Yeah, but they won't do the bo- the sports. Yeah, is not now on the streaming they service. do the the real streaming service. What's well, not on the boxing is not on there. Really? Yeah, because it's it's like special you know yeah. rights i guess to it i'm showing my age so um so, but they are for this fight um basically you know you can you can purchase it through showtimeppv.com and you can watch it on you know modern brow it's it's essentially going to be via the computer like yeah. you're going to have to watch it but still that's a step in the right direction yeah no that's totally a step in the right direction like um the <sighs> Again, like half of this is like they're already capturing the content digitally, right? So it's really all about how they're delivering it. Right. And so the fact that they're choosing to deliver it 
via something that is unbundled uh, rather than something that's bundled is really the big difference, right? And you could argue this is probably the smoothest transition because pay-per-view has always been inherently unbundled. Yeah, right? and I, that's why I don't. What what I I've been waiting. That should yeah, be the it's easiest always been thing weird, right? to throw out there because it's never been included in your service. So why not branch that off immediately? But right. it's, it makes the most sense. Yeah, which is why it went last, right? <laughs> like because the world well, is that's what you, with awkward. this industry, though. I mean, you yeah, know, it's just, I just humans, right? <laughs> so what are we gonna do? But they're also CBS is also announced during their earnings uh, call that they're going to be... They do have a CBSN, which has been great, which is... Right. They, they have basically started their own news network, right. over, but it's streaming only. Um, CBSN. They're going to be doing that with sports as well. They're going to be putting like a nice. sh- like pure sports streaming service Yeah, together. kind of to compete with ESPN. Right. And and that's the thing is like when... And and I think Moonves was... Les Moonves, the you yeah. know president of... Uh, of CBS was saying um, how when he was looking at you know the cable news market with CNN and MSNBC and Fox, they pretty much had that territory. It didn't really yep. make sense for them to try to like no, throw a startup in. in. All the bases were covered, but streaming it's a whole new world. So he said it made total sense to just like come up with CBSN. Well, and once- and. If you're Which prov- you can get for free, by the way. Yeah, and if you're providing your content, like if you're uh, CBS and you're providing your content uh, direct via streaming, it's so much easier to transition into social media and just distribute your content, right? Like think about all those other companies that uh, have these shows running over like traditional cable and so on. And then they have to convert it over into something and put it into a channel that can be hung out in social media. Right. But this is just like ready made for it. Yeah. So so they're they're serious. CBS is very serious. That's it seems really about, smart about streaming. Yeah. Um, on all fronts, because they're allowing their content because they have like their own service, which you can pay, which is going to have their own original content on it. But you can also get the local affiliates through various other streaming networks. Well, it's also clever on their part to make as much of the content free as possible, at least for now, right? Like build the brand up and then start carving off things, you know, once the brand is built significantly after a couple of years yeah, and say this particular item we're now going to charge for. Right. right? Well, and I think that's what they're doing because if they haven't done it yet, because CBSN was free, yeah. I have to check because they did announce that it was moving over to CBS All Access. I'm not sure if there's still a free app yet. I have to go check on my Roku. <laughs> I've <laughs> not see if seen it's still there. many news news when I say channels, I don't mean like cable channels like you would see on the, you know, into your receiver. I mean like uh channels by which news is delivered. There's just not that many that are pay these days other than the journal or traditional newspaper or magazines. Right. Right? Like, most news is advertising-based. Yep. Yeah. So that's what CBSN was doing. But, I mean, now, like, they might... With yeah, the, they could switch up the model. They could be pulling it over. Um. So getting... This this next this next one is a bit... A little bit of news and a little bit of speculation. Um, Discovery Network is going to acquire if it passes all of the um you know the FTC merger terms um they're going to acquire scripts network and that is going to give them HGTV the cooking channel and the food network so you're going to have those three networks along with you know all those discovery channels and like i think national geographic as well um all together are going to be owned by the same company. So you're looking at interesting. You know, TLC, HGTV, Discovery ID, Food Network. Um that's I mean that's a lot of what when you think I think what they're gunning for here and this was mentioned in the article is there's a huge female demographic um 
you know, amongst the in within scripts, like sure. when you're looking at that, and it's going to give discovery like you know a lot of ability to target ads. Yeah, at, to them. Well, in in one of the things that um, is commonly discussed, at least. Um, I've read about it, but like in advertising circles, is that a very large portion of the, you know, uh, consumer discretionary spending is driven by the female in a yeah. family. Yeah, right? and that's like it's, just it's that's typically just what the numbers show. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just it's typically like the mom in the household does. The majority, basically, guys like Dennis and I are useless. Is really yeah, what it comes that's what down it is. To. My wife makes calls most of the shots financially in the house. And my wife calls most of the shots. Period. <laughs> um, so, and the speculation piece though is that Discovery was just courting AMC to kind of join and not not to. I don't. I don't think there was talk of a purchase, but there was talk like of affiliation of some sort. Yeah, they wanted to. P- put together a non-sports streaming channel. That's interesting. Right. So now... AMC's got some good, like... AMC's really... I'll, I'll be frank. AMC is the only real network outside of, like, your premium channels that I would really be heartbroken if I wasn't able to watch. Yeah. All the I, other ones I could kind of do without, you, honestly. You count stars in your premium, right? Yeah, yes, I do. Because I would... Stars would hurt Ash vs. Evil Dead, Ash man. Ash vs. Evil Dead, I can't... <laughs> Season three is coming. I can't lose. That. Oh, I'm going. You're going to be jealous. I'm going to Universal Studios next month. Yeah. Halloween Horror Nights. Ugh. There's an Ash vs. Evil Dead. That's it. We're breaking up. <laughs> Podcast is canceled, people. We're done. Ah, oh, man. I, I, I'll get you a uh, hardback copy of the Necronomicon. I, ex- I expect <laughs> Oh, I hope autograph. they have one. I'll have to go get one. Yeah, I, I hope they have like, a autograph. replica. I'm totally yeah. going to get one. <laughs> so, um, so they were recording. They were recording AMC, and that kind of like I don't know what came of that. Yeah, but but it's an interesting idea. The fact that they bought scripts, and if they're still thinking that. I think there's enough there's enough there sure. to where they could put their own streaming channel. Now that wasn't announced. That's just me kind of speculating. Yeah, but it's an interesting but, idea. Well, yeah, but if you have like, you know, if you have all the Discovery channels, yep. Animal Planet, HGTV, Cooking Channel, TLC. Yep. I know plenty of people that would pay it's half of what's on in my house. Yeah, to see that. I mean, I would I I think there is there's a statistic somewhere where they're that's about like twenty percent of the viewership on cable TV. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. It's like thirteen. I'm sorry. It's thirteen point two percent of the Again, viewership. Again, that is a sizable chunk. Right. Especially AMC probably handles like you know oh, yeah. that on its own. But well, the the second biggest or the biggest show on television is The Walking Dead. Yeah. Second or biggest depending on who's doing the counting and whether you count like paid tv shows like game of thrones right right like but so amc is a juggernaut like for all intents and purposes yeah oh i'm sorry and that was just for the scripts network was 13.2 the combined company will have that's where it was the combined company will have 20 percent of ad supported pay tv viewership in the u.s yeah 20 percent is a huge deal so was 20 I mean, it looks to me as these channels are kind of positioning themselves to yep. at least to kind of, you know, go streaming, whether pay TV likes it or not. Yeah, and honestly, you could, I mean, like, the people who really hold the cards are the ones who have the content. Because they can cut a deal with all sorts of different providers, right? Like... Yes, the ISPs, they are, well, it depends on where the net neutrality uh, rules come down, but uh, there are some definite threats to competition there, yeah, right? Yeah, And the fact that our um, connections to the internet are all localized definitely does threaten some of that stuff. 
but more and more content's being consumed mobily, as we talked about, and there's at least a good portion of this country that does have some level of price competition. So the content providers themselves have a, a big hand to play here. Right. So yeah. I'm interested. I am too. But not everyone's doing it right because Viacom. All right. Okay. Deutsche Bank just gave them a rating of sell. Ooh. Which for a box. Mo- for buy for a big company to get a sell rate, I mean that's not good. It's especially yeah. you know a big name like Viacom. Yeah. Um, and the reasoning they gave because if, if they just pulled out like for instance, Viacom has been kind of stingy when it comes to streaming. Right. They pulled a lot of content out of Hulu. They pulled a lot of content out of um, PlayStation View, um, and. They're saying, like, the analysts are sitting there saying that they need to sell now because it's right. all downhill from here, essentially, is kind of right. what, like, if you hold it, like, they're, they're basically saying that it, they're DOA right. um, for the, and, and in the future. And a big reasoning that they gave was um, while they do are on DirecTV Now service, um, the fact that they're not on Hulu or, or, um, youtube or sony anymore because they're on sling as well um really affects their deutsche bank said that that really affects what where their future looks like compared yeah to these other networks is that they are not as dispersed so yeah. the fact that deutsche bank is saying like they're looking at that as an indicator yeah really does say something i mean there's two it, it, there's at least two obvious reasons why that's a big disadvantage one is it means automatically you're going to limit who is consuming your content. Right. Right? Like, because there's just not everybody has every service, right? Like, most people have one or two services, and that's about it, right? Um, With the exception of people like Dennis, who own a, you know, cord-cutting blog. Right. Right? (laughs) Who who writes about it. But, um... You know, so that's one major disadvantage. The other thing is by putting your eggs in, you know, two baskets, it means you lose a lot of negotiating power. So the the um, cut of revenue you're going to get on the viewership is going to be, you know, lower than what your competitors are getting because they're spread across a whole bunch of other uh, providers. Right. Like, so imagine you're one of these other companies that competes with Viacom and they've got all of these other channels they could provide their content through, you know, PlayStation, et cetera. Right. And, you know, they start to get a bad deal. They can go, hey, well, I'll go over here to Hulu, right, and see if I can get a better deal. And so there's a lot of price competition to, like, get their cut of the revenue higher. Well, Viacom loses that, yeah. right? They just don't have that negotiating power. Yeah, so, I mean, the fact that they've been rating a sell and then that Deutsche Bank made this an issue, kind of, one thing is, is it puts it out there. Yeah. That if you're not looking at modern ways of delivering your content over yeah. streaming, you know, at you a minimum, might get... you get punished by the market. Right. So... And, and that in and of itself... Well, it it probably means I I would be surprised if there's not a shakeup in leadership in Viacom after something. I think like they're that. still owned by the Redstone family, if I'm not mistaken. Sumner Rem- Sumner Redstone, I think owns. Uh, it sounds right, but so. that's not who runs the company. Right, yeah, probably right? not. That's probably and yeah. so like ownership is one thing. But management's another, That's right? True. Yeah. And so shaking up management's really easy. Ownership, not so much. Yeah. Right. So so the other person, the other company that I think screwed this up, and it's not the content network. It, it's our friends at Comcast. Ugh. They, um, I, I saw this headline that said, you know, FX is going to have a $6 a month ad-free streaming service. Got very excited. It's clicked, interesting. Right? I clicked on the link and I read the story and I discovered that it's Comcast and FX is partnering. And if you don't like commercials, you can stream FX for extra, what, I think six bucks a month 
But only if you're a Comcast subscriber. Right, which, you know, uh, what's the Latin phrase for that? Um, they should um, go fuck themselves. <laughs> that's, that's the technical term for that. <laughs> like, that's horrible. Yeah, I mean, and they just did this with AMC, too. You can spend an extra five bucks. Yeah. To watch AMC commercial free. But only if I can lock you into a two year contract. <sighs> yeah, no. And, and that's the, it's like, you're doing it wrong. It's like, right. it's, it's like, I swear you got like some stuffy execs sitting in a the room. They're like, kids love the streaming and they don't like the commercials. Yeah. So let's charge them an extra $11 and they can get their two favorite networks. And they can watch it on their commercial free. They can watch it on their mobiles. So and instead their, of spending you know, and their, $350 a month or whatever it is, right. they can spend $361 a month and not have commercials on those two networks and watch right. it on their Zoom. Uh, <laughs> and they can bump their device with the other person and share it. Do you remember that? I do. Uh, yeah, so, it's a really terrible idea. It'd be so much smarter to just spin it off as a subsidiary and like have a revenue sharing plan. Yeah, I don't see why these networks like FX and I don't know. Yeah, Fox has been stingy a bit with the content too. We'll see. But AMC and FX can kind of call the shots. Those are those are two solid networks on cable. Yeah, because I would say that's probably FX is probably like my number two. I would. Like after AMC, I'm trying to think what runs on FX. I used to watch Burn Notice, but um, that was a while back. Let's see again. Like Louis, there's Bruce Campbell. Um, they do um, the American Horror Story is a solid. Oh uh, yeah, FX. new seasons coming out of that. Yeah, um, it's called Cult. The League. Yeah, I'm excited about that. The League was on FX. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that was solid. All right, yeah. I mean, it's not anymore, but. Done. It's not on FX? It's done. I mean, didn't they finish up? I don't know. I thought they did. I'm eh. going to have to... I, I'll get Paul Shear and Jason Manzukis on speed dial and see what's <laughs> going on. So, as usual, you know, Comcast is doing this wrong. Yeah, they're just not thinking ahead. Now, again, Comcast can reverse course, right? Because we've been saying... We have legitimately been saying this for a long time. That if you are really rich, like Comcast, yeah. you, you can be a little dumb. Yeah, you dumb. can make a lot of mistakes. You can be a little dumb. You can even be president. For a long time. It's possible. Hey, I was going to say it, but I didn't say it. No, what? I say it. what? I didn't you say could. anything. Yeah, well. I, no, what are you talking about? I'm saying you like could. Al- you could hypothetically, if you're, you're not really like rich. alluding to it. No, anything. I'm not. No. That would no, be important. If you're really rich, you could, you know. Make a lot of mistakes and still be president. Get into a job that you're not qualified for and continue to make mistakes and be hardly punished for it. I, hypothetically, that could hypothetically, happen. That yeah. could. Hypothetically, you could, could you know. It could be happening right now. It could. And we could be in a democratic crisis. Yeah, you could hypothetically be very rich, make a lot of mistakes, be president, and, you know, randomly threaten a nuclear power over Twitter. That's possible. I mean, you could do that. Good. It would be <laughs> okay. So on that note. Oh god, I'm gonna go hide in my bunker. There was no <laughs> there was no policy. I had to bring some policy in. Yeah. It's just where policy and technology collide. Right. <laughs> oh, god. If you're enjoying the show, <laughs> please subscribe. Leave a comment. And you can leave us a comment on uh, iTunes. That'd be great. We love those five stars, please. Um, if you have any questions or comments about the show or, you know, you just want to chat, you can email us at podcast at groundedreason.com. You can follow us on Twitter at Grounded Reason. You could look us up on the Facebook page. And if you're going to be in the neighborhood, we're going to be at L.A. Podfest. Oh, that's right. We're going to be going to L.A. Podfest not to perform, but just to hang out as a listener. Go check out some shows. Maybe look at some podcasting workshops for the other side of the business. Because they have they have shows for you know listeners out there that just want to go and check out shows. And then they also have some more you know for people nerdy podcast type right, stuff yeah. that you can go check out. And I'm sure there's a bar at the hotel. So... We'll probably be there. Probably. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, yeah. And you can always, of course, go to groundreason.com and, you know, check out the blog and leave a comment there. 
Thanks for listening. This is Dennis Rostaro. And this is Joel Reeves. And we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.